Pancake everyone, have you thought about how infinite the universe is and whether there is life on other planets? And if it exists, how dangerous can it be for our civilization? Well, let's discuss that in today's video. Enrico Fermi is one of the most outstanding Italian physicists, who received recognition thanks to the creation of the Italian School of Theoretical Physics. Starting from a young age, Enrico stood out for his love of physics, so choosing a college specialty did not take much time. In the contest for a seat he took first place, entered, but the catch turned out to be that the teachers had little to teach so many educated youngsters. He was self-taught and had a phenomenal memory, which allowed him to thoroughly study not only physics, but also foreign languages from books. Circumstances forced Fermi to emigrate from Italy to America at an older age, after many years of teaching in many Italian universities as a professor. The students adored their teacher, and believed that his lectures were more than just lectures, being more akin to a sermon. Fermi himself believed that it was necessary to instill a love for physics, to teach its spirit and power. His greatest works begin in Chicago. Quantum statistics, beta decay theory, artificial radioactivity. His biggest discovery was the creation of a nuclear reactor. It was Enrico Fermi who opened the doors of the atomic age. He was even awarded the Nobel Prize for the discovery of a nuclear reaction caused by slow neutrons. The last years of his life were also chock full of science. He devoted himself to works on the origin of high energy cosmic rays. A few years later, Fermi discovers the first hadron resonance, which becomes his last discovery in physics. For his multifaceted services, to perpetuate the memory of the scientist, the hundredth element on the periodic table is named after him, fermium, which corresponds to the scientist because of its radioactivity. How did such a wonderful paradox arise? Well, for starters, Fermi himself did not create it. He simply asked the question, if aliens exist, where are they? Have you ever wondered where everyone is? Hence, the discussions that gave rise to this paradox begin. The Russian scientist Tsiolkovsky, in his philosophical notes, wrote the following. There are a million billion suns in the known universe. Therefore, we have as many planets similar to Earth. It would be outrageous to deny the existence of life on them. If it originated on Earth, then why wouldn't it appear under the same conditions on planets similar to Earth? There may be fewer of them compared to the number of suns, but they have to be out there. It is possible to deny that there is life on 50, 70, 90% of all of these planets, but on all of them, that is absolutely impossible. Scientists have tried to find an answer to this question, to unravel or refute the paradox, and such studies have created a lot of different theories and hypotheses. One of these is the Drake Equation, as a support for the paradox, which states that with a combination of various factors, civilization achieving technological progress inevitably self-destructs. For example, due to the creation of weapons of mass destruction. As a result, we, like other civilizations, do not have time to establish contact. But seriously, if aliens do exist, then where are all of them? And why haven't they come to visit us yet? According to a friend of Fermi, he himself explained it as follows. Either interstellar travel is impossible, or it is not worth the effort, or technologically advanced civilizations do not live long. Other scientists and inventors were a bit more skeptical. For example, Michael Hart, who wrote the following, Humanity is the first intelligent species inside this galaxy, and that therefore could be why there were no visits to this solar system by other civilizations. In support of this idea, Robin Hansen created the so-called Great Filter, which consists of a list of evolutionary facts that must come together in order for an alien civilization to arise. And since we do not observe such colonies, that implies that at some point in evolution there is an insurmountable barrier that prevents the development of life forms similar to us. So what is the main problem with interstellar travel then? Jeffrey Landis hypothesized that direct interstellar travel is limited by its range and that the number of star systems suitable for colonization is very small. There is also a risk that colonies may develop both that seek to further colonize and that do not, and the latter would stop the interstellar expansion. In addition to these problems, there are technical issues. For example, time. Flights can take tens of thousands of years, which obviously exceeds the lifespan of a human being. If you use spaceships, then streams of dust and gas can destroy protective screens 
and it is incredibly difficult to say for sure whether it'll fly, because of the limited amount of energy. Dear viewers of the Pancake Channel, if you like such informative videos, then support us with your like and subscription. Hope you enjoy the rest of the video. And what have we done to contact the alien intelligence? In the 70s, the Voyager project was launched, which is the Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 space probes built for the purpose of exploring the solar system, and even pursued the idea of leaving its limits. These high-precision robots are equipped with computers, radio communication for transmitting information, and much more. Thanks to them, humanity has learned interesting facts about giant planets, new satellites of planets, and other things. But what makes these flying machines so special? A special aluminum box with a gold-plated disc is attached to each of them, which stores information about our planet, with very detailed descriptions about human civilization, the structure of DNA, the sounds of our nature, and a map. In addition, there is a whole gallery of pictures, classical music, and even 55 greetings in different languages of the world. But why go to the trouble? This data carrier was placed there for reasons that perhaps another civilization will intercept Voyager, and having found the disk, will be able to find out where we are by coordinates, what we are, and visit us. There is also a recording of Jimmy Carter, the former president of the United States, with the following words. This device was created in the USA, a country with a population of 240 million people among the 4 billion population of the Earth. Humanity is still divided into separate nations and states, but countries are rapidly moving towards a single earthly civilization. And this is a gift from a small distant world. Our sounds, our science, our images, our music, our thoughts and feelings. We are trying to survive in our time to live in yours. We hope the day will come when the problems we face today will be solved and we will join the galactic civilization. These recordings represent our hopes, our determination, and our goodwill in this universe, vast and awe-inspiring. Was it worth sending Voyager? In order to fulfill its main goal to go beyond the solar system, according to NASA calculations, it'll take about 30,000 more years, and the probes have yet to encounter any sort of alien intelligence. But at the end of the day, it was worth all of the effort, at least for the study of outer space, also for the sake of new knowledge about the planets in our system, and information about the heliospheric shockwave. There are a lot of myths and legends about unidentified flying objects, and all of it is shrouded in mystery. But is there any actual evidence? Is it really true that aliens visit our Earth? Well, let's figure it out. The popularity of the topic is off the charts, because not only do ordinary people report UFO sightings in the sky, but also military, sailors, and even pilots. Most often the object is described as something in the form of a dish, which is either very maneuverable or, on the contrary, suspended in the air and emitting an incredibly bright light. The special services became seriously interested in this phenomenon and began to study, because such flying objects in the sky can be a threat to national security. In 1951, secret research on UFOs and associated facts began in the United States. The project was called the Blue Book and was classified until 1970. The Air Force reported on the study as follows. None of the unidentified flying objects, reports of which were received, investigated, and evaluated by the Air Force, have ever shown signs of being a threat to national security. There is no evidence presented or discovered by the Air Force that the allegedly observed objects classified as unidentified are based on technological developments and principles beyond the limits of modern scientific knowledge. There is no evidence that the allegedly observed objects of the category unknown are extraterrestrial vehicles. End of quote. Thus, the invasion and the danger of extraterrestrial civilization were refuted, due to the lack of evidence of their existence. No crashes, no attempts to get in touch with the Earth from the so-called UFOs have been reported. Most often, these were either secret reconnaissance aircraft which were created in the United States, or it turned out to be a ball of lightning. So, no aliens or magic, only human developments and the wonders of nature. So, what does the space travel of the future have in store for us? As a matter of fact, a lot of interesting things. Not too long ago, we couldn't even imagine we would reach the moon. Meanwhile, today there are plans to colonize Mars with the help of robots, and create a separate energy storage system. Space tourism will develop on Mars itself, thanks to the idea of vacuum trains going through tunnels. Elon Musk was inspired by this idea, calling the train project Hyperloop, which will be able to reach speeds of up to 621 miles per hour, and move through special dedicated tunnels with a vacuum. 
Also, in the near future, they're supposed to start building a space elevator. At first, it will be used for purposes of delivering cargo, and then for interplanetary travel of people. This is a cable construction going into space made of a material 100 times stronger than steel. Where the cabin rises due to the rotational speed of the planet, and on which it is installed to the orbital station. This will reduce spending on rockets, and significantly reduce the duration of such travel. So based on all the information, it is easy to come to the conclusion that the Fermi Paradox does not exist and cannot exist. Since we do not have enough information to know for sure about interstellar travel. And we won't know for the next few hundred, maybe even thousands of years. Dear viewers of our channel, do not forget to subscribe and like the video, in order to see us pop up in your recommendations as often as possible. Also, let us know in the comments what you think about infinite space and other civilizations. This has been Pancake, we wish you all a good mood and a fair wind. Have a good one! Pancake, everyone!